Andrew Carnegie in the steel industry. In this video, you will learn about the following topics. Andrew Carnegie, steel, vertical integration, urbanization in cities, the gospel of wealth, labor union and strikes, and how they affected the history then and our world now. Andrew Carnegie was a Scottish immigrant born on November 25, 1835. His hometown was famous for and supported its residents by making fine linens. However, when industrialism overtook the town, the linen business was no longer needed, leaving men like Carnegie's father out of work. In 1848, after much sacrifice from the Carnegie family, 13-year-old Andrew and his brother Tom were taken to America by their parents in hope for a better life. Carnegie was a hard worker all of his life. He worked from sunup to sundown when he was only 13 years old. He taught himself how to use certain tools, and he used books to supplement his education. He worked multiple railroad jobs, and by the time he was 24, he was climbing up the job market ladder. He made advancements and investments in the oil, iron, railroad, and steamer businesses, such as the sleeping cars, and started to intake wealth. When he was just 30 years old, he began to get involved in the steel business. He formed the first steel plant and purchased his computer in the steel industry, Homestead Steel Works. He later created the Carnegie Steel Corporation, which became the biggest steel corporation in the world. Andrew Carnegie promised to retire from the industry business at the young age of 35. After his retirement, he lived off a yearly income of $50,000 that he would live off for, for the rest of his life. He devoted the rest of his funds to th philanthropic organizations and education. He sold his company to J.P. Morgan in 1901 for $480 million and became the richest man in the world at the time. The incredible and innovative man died on August 11, 1919. The Steel Industry By purifying iron through oxidation, a brand new material was discovered. Not only was it lighter, it was more durable than iron. The process of turning iron to steel, known as the Bessemer process, was originally discovered in England by Henry Bessemer. With the introduction of steel, America quickly outweighed the British in production. Andrew Carnegie used techniques such as the open hearth process, which allowed pieces of metal to form fine quality steel. This easy way of production led to the drop in price of steel, which made steel more viable to industry. Steel made a huge impact on the country as a whole during the Gilded Age. Carnegie controlled the steel business in the U.S., where the economy, growth, or wealth was based on the production of steel. The invention of steel made many innovations possible. For example, the railroad, even the iron railway, is a huge improvement from the wooden track before. Still, the iron rail in some positions does not last six months, stated in the book for the railroad world. Moreover, due to the hard strength of the steel, Steel is able to use, be used in, to build bridges, skyscrapers, and elevators. Vertical integration, the bringing together of all these operations under one company. In order to thrive in highly competitive business world, Andrew Carnegie, along with the other tycoons, always shrewd at seeking new means to maximize their profits by minimizing their costs. Vertical integration, a strategy to control all the phases of products development by gaining control of their respective businesses, was implemented by them. A piece of Carnegie steel was made by four steps. Raw materials such as an ore, iron needs to be exploited, intermediate step including smelting iron and refined it to steel, assemble parts, separate pieces of steel, transportation of refined final product and cell were encompassed within this, his business. In this way, he guaranteed a reliable flow of the crucial supplies at predictable prices, meantime denied raw materials to competitors. Urbanization in cities. The infinite possibility that was brought to the world because of steel are indescribable. Our everyday life became easier because of steel. New inventions such as skyscrapers, cable cars, subways, and the elevator began to rise besides strengthening the infrastructure. As a result, the population in the cities rose, where urban values were incorporated into American culture. However, problems came along with urbanization. Overcrowding cities forced the lower income families to live in tenements, a low cost multi-family housing. And since the population density is really high in the urban area, diseases transmitted easily, sanitation became deficiently, and pollution expanded uncontrollably. With the airing problem, many progressive reformers began to focus on improving the urban lives. One of the prominent reformers was Jane Addams, who established a social settlement house in the United States where the life of the poor and the new immigrants were highly improved. Settlement house is the idea that the fortunate people will live with the less fortunate ones by enhancing their intellectual and social experience. Social gospel is a reform movement that was believed to improve society by emerging Christian principles. They urged the teaching of charity and justice, where many believers advocated for the end of child labor's shorter work week and minimize the powers of corporation. The Gospel of Wealth. The Gospel of Wealth was an article written in June 1889 by Andrew Carnegie. The article described the belief that Carnegie 
had that all of the rich that were self-made had a duty to be philanthropic. He believed that the rich were superior to the poor, and those that are rich should use their wealth and knowledge of the world to help superior, the superior people, in superior people. He believed that the self-made wealthy men knew how to prosper in the society that they lived in, and the rich men could use their money and knowledge to help the poor be, become more successful. This proposal contradicted what the wealthy thought at the time. They believed that money should be passed down to their heirs. Carnegie stated that this was not the best use of money. Also, he argued that using the money in a wasteful way in the form of extravagance, irresponsible spending, or self-indulgent instead of promoting the administration of money throughout the course of one's lifetime toward the cause of reducing the stratification between the rich and the poor. As a result, the wealthy should administer their riches responsibly and not in a way that encourages the slothful, the drunken, the unworthy. He believed that the rich need to aid the poor. However, they could not simply give the poor money, but it was their duty to keep them achieve success, such by endowing free libraries, schools, and universities. An excerpt from the Gospel of Wealth article created to, credited to Andrew Carnegie that portrays this idea as our primary source is, the problem of our age is the proper administration of wealth so that the ties of brotherhood may still bind together the rich and the poor in harmonious relationship. The conditions of human life have not only been changed, but revolutionized. Within the past few hundred years, in former days, there was little difference between the dwelling, dress, food, and environment of the chief and those of retainers. The Indians are today where civilized men then was. When visiting the Soaks, I was led to the wig man of the chief. It was just like the others in external appearance, and even within the difference of trifling between it and those of the poorest and his braves, the contrast between the palace of the millionaire and the cottage of the laborer. Labor Union and Strikes Peeling off the gilded covering of thriving businesses and economy revealed the mishap of workers. During this period, workers had been piled up in small, dark workhouses known as sweatshops. Low wages required both parents to work, further stimulated child labor. Some workers, especially minors, were forced to live in isolated communities where they had been trapped into wage slavery. While most of the relationships between employers and employees that period were sick, it was astonishing that Andrew, a steel magnate, been reputed as a benevolent employer and champion of labor who had defended urbanization. His reputation was pure before Homestead Steel Strike in 1892. In response to the price drop of steel, the manager of Andrew, Frick, cut the wages of workers, later closed the mill and refused for negotiation after workers protest, protested. When workers turned to Andrew, who always defended for them, they found him unavailable which was controversial. Then they, the strike broke out in New Orleans under the collective forces of private army hired by Frick and Pennsylvania state militia. The strike was finally suppressed. In review, overall, being a lifetime hard worker and the second wealthiest man in America during the 19th century, Andrew Carnegie exerted unprecedented contributions not only in his steel industry, but the whole American economy during his period. Being a philanthropist, he created his own ideology embodied by the gospel of wealth and donated nearly all of his tremendous fortune, gathered the last half of his life to society. He is undeniably an exemplary great entrepreneur in American history to be memorized. Thank you. Thank you.